Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, Father, Divine Mother, Mother, Friend, Beloved God, God, Jesus Christ, Christ, Babaji Krishna, Krishna, Lahiri Lahiri Mahashaya, Swami Sri Yukteswar, Beloved Master, Master, Paramhansa Yogananda, Yogananda. Saints of all religions, religions. humbly we bow to you all. Help us to attune ourselves to to your divine presence presence. that we may be uplifted and transformed by your omnipresent love. Om. Peace. Amen. Please be seated. This evening's program has, um, is just basically one continuous pageant. At a certain point, we start with our Festival of Light, which many of you are familiar with. On Christmas Eve, we have a tradition of everyone having a candle, which I believe you all have, which will eventually be lit. And then when we do the arati, which is offering the light, which is symbolic of the divine light within us, instead of just one of us representing everyone, everyone has a candle and everyone makes the offering of the light. So we're not going to stop and explain it at that point. But what we're doing with this small symbolic candle is we're representing that power of life itself that is given to us by God that we offer back to God. We offer back to the birth of the Christ within us um, by just holding it in our right hand and offering it to the masters on the altar, to the pageant of the living that you'll see in front of you at that point. And then we'll offer a blessing as we always do. We have to ask you to go backwards from what you usually do, which is to come forward down the side aisles and return to your seat down the center. Um, Because after you receive the blessing, you'll come up um, to what will look very different at that point and uh, symbolically place your candle which you have offered on the altar at the feet of the baby Jesus. That's the last thing you have to know. The angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. 
And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father, David. He shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her.
And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. Lift your eyes and concentrate within. Behold the astral star of divine wisdom and let the wise thoughts in you follow that telescopic star to behold the Christ everywhere. In that land of everlasting Christmas, of festive omnipresent Christ consciousness, you will find Jesus, Krishna, the saints of all religions, the great guru preceptors, all waiting to give you a divine floral reception of ever new everlasting happiness. Prepare for the baby Christ by decorating the Christmas tree of your universal love with gifts of calmness, forgiveness, nobility, service, kindness, spiritual understanding 
and devotion, wrapped in your golden goodwill and bound with the silver cord of your pure sincerity. Through the, through the portal of your meditation, let your imprisoned joy escape to and rest in the heart of Christ, which is in everything. Let your joy dance in the farthest planets, over the vastness of the blue, and in the nearest waves of your love. Then you will behold Christ cradled in every manifest thing. Let's now have a few moments of meditation. In our earlier meditation, which many of you attended, um, Shanti um, included a, what the Christmas message that Swami delivered Christmas 2012. <clears throat> Since he left his body in April 2013, that was actually his last Christmas message. Christmas was always for Yogananda, for Master, for Swamiji, and by extension then for Ananda, Christmas has always been a very, um, a very a, a big holiday, is the words I want to use. We've always celebrated Christmas in a very dynamic manner. Uh, when we were young disciples at Ananda Village in the 70s, Swami was very stern with us that we needed to stay in the ashram at Christmas time, that it was too important a spiritual occasion to dissipate <clears throat> merely with our families. He said it to the point, you know, even if your family disowns you, you should stay, which was quite a statement. He said their egos, excuse me, I'm, I seem to be having... <coughs> He said, even if their egos are displeased, their souls will be deeply blessed by your spiritual sincerity, which was quite a statement. I don't think anyone was disowned, but nonetheless, Swami J. himself, just interestingly, let me just gather, I just need the word. Just because I've said it, it's interesting. Swami just lead these enormous Christmas celebrations at Ananda. Then it was, when it was all over on Christmas night, he would drive the four hours from Ananda Village down to a, his parents lived in uh, Atherton and then Menlo Park. Every Christmas night he would come here. Finally, they took mercy on him and he started coming the next morning. But he would stay entirely for the whole spiritual and then he would also give his family their due. He was very respectful on all sides of it. But in this last message that he delivered, he just starts right in saying, when he was a young disciple, when he was just 22 years old, when he'd been with Master for one month, Master invited him to the desert, to where Master was working on his Gita commentary. And the first thing that Master said was that the three wise men were three of our gurus, Lahiri Mahashaya, Sri Yukteswar, and Babaji. And then Swami says in this message, he said, when I worked on the Revelations of Christ book, 
He said, I just came to feel that Master must have been Jesus. And he said it just as if he were announcing that. And of course, I heard Swami say that periodically in the last years of his life. But it wasn't until I was watching it just a couple of hours ago that I realized this was his last Christmas message and he said it unequivocally. And he talked about, very simply, he said, a soul with the compassion of Jesus, and this is what Master said to him, would naturally reincarnate again and again. That a person, and a, a, an avatar is just a person, a person who, who longs so deeply to uplift the world doesn't just consider the job done. It's, it has to keep repeating. And then Swami talked about Master's incarnations as William and as um, Ferdinand, the, Ferdinand. And Master repeatedly coming back to preserve some aspect of Christianity. As William, he built up the church and connected England to Rome when England was going more toward uh, 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 the Scandinavian way, which was not so Christian at that time. As Ferdinand, he drove the Moors out of Spain and recaptured it for Christianity. Now, we think so much in terms of the church, and we think about what's going on nowadays, and we think about Jesus' teaching as the people who have co-opted it in the name of religion. But that isn't at all what we're working with. What we're working with is this extraordinary, powerful force of love that is absolutely determined that we ourselves will expand into that infinity of love. And we are working with souls who love so much that no sacrifice is too great for the possibility of even one soul. Master wrote a poem, and he said that phrase, I will return, he said, again and again, with bleeding feet, crossing crags of suffering, as long as one stray brother is left behind. Now we, who who measure our affections so carefully, and, and hoard our energy, and protect our vulnerabilities, and I'm not mocking that. That is simply what we do. We have this illusion of separateness. We have this delusion of lack. And so we're always trying to be careful about it. And it's almost impossible for us to imagine um, the kind of consciousness that, that counts itself as nothing because it knows itself to be everything. And that still finds so precious that one stray brother that the whole incarnation will be directed if necessary. That's when the masters incarnate. They come to uplift the world, but primarily they come for their disciples. They come for even a very small band to help move them forward. And once that power of a divine incarnation is launched, it's eternal. Man's memory becomes short. And so Zoroastrian, Zoroaster becomes a little bit dim in the past. Moses is a little dim in the past. And there's names that we don't even know. Jesus is more vivid to us. But every, once an infinite power like that is launched, it remains with us forever. Master says wherever a, a, a self-realized master has been, his consciousness is always there. So we come back to Christmas Eve, and it was the inspiration of St. Francis, who was trying to revitalize again Christianity in his own way, that we would reenact this beautiful story of the birth of Christ and become childlike and motherly in our enthusiasm so that we would begin to remember. All of divine realization is just remembering. All of this uh, 
careful protecting of our vulnerabilities is because we have forgotten. Many of you know that uh, I returned to Israel in November for the second trip that I'd taken there. And my two experiences walking in the footsteps of Christ were like, were like uh, night and day one from another. Equally valid, but exceedingly different. The first time I was there, what I felt was what Swami described in his Christmas message, was this vast impersonal power that simply permeates the universe like, like, like a tsunami that, that just sweeps over everything and everything is consumed by the force of that. And that it's not that we are unimportant, it's that everything that we consider to be important becomes dissolved as we elevate into that power. I remember standing at the confluence of two rivers at uh, Deva Priyag, Prayag in uh, wherever it is, on the way up to Badrinath. And, and you can walk right down to the point. There's no barriers, there's no fences, there's nothing. You just walk right down to this tiny spit of land where there's two huge rivers just come together to make this force. And, you know, you're feeling Mother Nature's power. And I, I have no suicidal impulse. But in the face of that, you, ha- you have the realization that how easily you could just slip into that water and you would be gone. And, and it's, it's not exactly a temptation, but it's a realization that everything that I, all these vulnerabilities that I protect, just Mother Nature could just take it like that and I would be gone and there would be a certain kerfuffle behind me. Uh, But I would just go like that. Now, that kind of, of wanton sacrifice of a human body is not divinely sanctioned. But that kind of wanton sacrifice of a human ego is exactly what God is always asking of us. And he's always giving us the chance. He's just always giving us the chance to just let it go. And nonetheless, we we hold. So the second time, and, and so when I the first time I went to Israel, that was the that was the Jesus that I met, quite unexpectedly. I'd expected to meet the person, but I, I met the infinite spirit. And I came home greatly elevated by the experience, never thinking I would go back, but I was called back a second time. And being there the second time, it was as a disciple. As a disciple of Master, as a disciple of Swami Kriyananda is a disciple of Jesus. It's all more than my little brain can hold. I have no idea. As a disciple of this ray that we have all been following for a very, very long time. And it's not as if this ray is like better in any way. Within infinity, how can there be better and worse? But for for those of us who belong to Jesus, for those of us who belong to Master, for those who belong to Swami or to Babaji or to Sri Yukteswar or to any other Master or Jesus in any way that you understand him, there is also something so deeply personal about this. It's, it's not personal the way we think it is. It's not personal in that Jesus is the only one and if I love Yogananda, I have to be loyal to him and I can't be loyal to Jesus and just all of this. It's not personal like that. It's personal in the way it fills 
us. Swami said that he he used to use the, the phrase impersonal love. And I used to object to it. And he used to ignore me. He would listen politely. He had this way that it took me longer than you would think to notice. He wouldn't argue. Swami never argued. If you weren't receptive, he had no... He knew if he had to persuade you, you would just revert. So he never tried to persuade. If you were receptive, he would help. So when I contradicted him, I and and this is how he treated me, when I contradicted him, he never argued. Um, He would even actually give me the impression that he was listening, even listening respectfully. But then he would quietly go his own way. And so that word impersonal love I never understood, but he continued to use it until I did understand. He said, impersonal love is that you're impersonal about yourself. This is where I started. It's hard for us to imagine how indifferent the masters are to their individuality because we're so partial to ours. Impersonal love offered is received as profoundly fulfilling to the individual heart. And for those of us who knew Swami Kriyananda, hundreds, I dare say thousands of people around the world, many of whom never met him in person, would write to him and say, I've never met you, but you're my best friend. Because they would feel that impersonal love was so perfect because so selfless that 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 deep vulnerability would be assuaged. Because when we know how deeply we are loved by God, you see, all other considerations become as tiny as they actually are. You know, all this that we protect It's just confusion. And, you know, being there in the Mount of Transfiguration, the Mount of Temptation, what they call the Rock of Agony. They have these fantastic words. The Rock of Agony, where Jesus lay across it when the night in the Garden of Gethsemane before he was crucified. And Master said, Master went to Jerusalem and He said, almost all these places are authentic, that they really are where they were. And and you feel, you feel yourself just in that aura of power and of love. And the thought crosses your mind, "Why why have I ever been concerned about anything? You know, what could possibly touch me? One of the most interesting experiences I had there was in a, an odd place, and I don't know whether, you know, and when you're on pilgrimage, you never know what's happening. There, when Jesus was arrested at the Garden of Gethsemane, and it, it took all night before they brought him to Pilate and then condemned him to be crucified. And during that night, he was moved from place to place, and he was taken to the high priest's house, the, the house of Caiaphas. And so there's this place that is considered to be was the house of Caiaphas, who was uh, one of the rulers there. And they took Jesus in, and there are these deep grottos under the house, which were either a prison or a wine cellar or who knows what exactly. But it is believed that Jesus was held down there. So we walked down into these caves, which were spacious, but they were well underground. And um, there was music, and it was beautiful. And I sat there, and this um, deep karmic fear of being imprisoned, and what I know must be also a karmic memory of being imprisoned, just sort of came into me. And I closed my eyes and realized that we are never alone. And far from feeling the kind of panic claustrophobia 
which would be a natural way to feel. I felt a freedom that I've almost never felt in my life because I realized you could be dark in the dark, you could be alone, you could be unknowing what was going to happen next, you could be abandoned by everyone and still be loved that all our ideas about what it means to be loved are all just confusion. It's not about earning it or receiving it or any of that. It just is. And that's who Jesus was. That's who all the masters are. They are this personal power of love being given to each of us as individuals, until our hearts become large enough to hold everything they have to give. That is the only, that is the only drama of life. All the rest of this, today, tomorrow, a hundred years from now, who will even know? But that, Receiving that love in our hearts, we have that forever. I was very deeply conscious, especially when I went where Jesus was crucified. Was I there? I really don't know. But I felt like it doesn't really matter how much time passes. Our divine experiences, the times we are touched by that infinite love, those are the pearls that are strung together, that are really the definition of our life. Everything else is just sand blowing in the wind. So let us open our hands, open our minds, open our hearts, open ourselves with everything we have to all those who received him, John said. To them gave he the power to become as he is, to be also then not only the one who receives, but also the one who can also give. God bless you. I went I've seen a star rise in the east and I'm looking for a friend From a lowly valley we ascend A wondrous vision sent us here We're looking for a friend To Our soul's long journey we would end Therefore we've come to Bethlehem We're looking for a friend To
Good people, let me come with you. Perhaps he's just around this bend. But whether near or far, I too have been looking for a friend. To Let us lift up our hearts in a festival of light. Door of my heart, open wide I keep for thee. I keep for thee. Wilt thou come? Wilt thou come? Just for once come to me. Wilt thou come? Wilt thou come? Just for once come to me. Will my days fly away without seeing? Will my days fly away without seeing Thee, my Lord? Night and day, night and day, I look for Thee night and day. Night and day, night and day, I look for Thee night and day. keep for thee, door of my heart, open wide I keep for thee. Wilt thou come, wilt thou come, just for once come to me? Wilt thou come, wilt thou come? Just for once come to me. Will my days fly away without seeing thee, my Lord? Will my days fly away without seeing thee, my Lord? Night and day, night and day. I look for thee night and day, night and day, night and day. I look for thee night and day, night and day, night and day. I look for thee night and day. The essence of this ceremony has been passed down from ancient times. O oh, waves that we are on the bosom of the infinite sea, joyfully, together, let us celebrate our own greater reality. For now, by God's grace, our redemption is at hand. The promise has been given. The divine light returning anew to earth, has given us power, as the Holy Bible proclaims, to become the sons of God. Into our hands have been delivered the sacred keys of awakening. Abundant now is our hope.
with peaceful wings unfold, and still their heavenly music floats o'er all the weary world. Above its sad and lonely place, they bend on hovering wings. Through the Bhagavad Gita promised, even the worst of sinners, by steadfast meditation on me, speedily comes to me. Again in that holy scripture he declared, even a little practice of this inward religion will free one from dire fears and colossal sufferings. And whereas suffering and sorrow in the past were the coin of man's redemption, for us now, the payment has been exchanged for calm acceptance and joy. Thus may we understand that pain is the fruit of self-love, whereas joy is the fruit of love for God. From sun and moon and all the stars, from glistening seas, high mountains, desert solitudes, and vast, fruitful plains, and from the hearts of mankind and creatures everywhere goes up in wordless yearning a prayer for redemption. Long I've called you, my Lord, long I've called you. Many years I have longed for your sight. Bathe the darkness with tears of devotion. Offered candles in prayer to your light. Will you 
Please stand and repeat after me. O mighty source of all that is, is, from sorrow lead us to everlasting joy. From From darkness lead us to infinite light. From From death lead us to immortality. Om peace. Amen. Please be seated. A fledgling bird once flew out into the world, gained strength and wisdom, its parents told it, and what you acquire share with others, even as we have shared with you, for you are a part of all that is. Thus, Lord, We left you countless eons ago. Ours was a holy mission. You charged us to learn great lessons from life, to be fruitful in the gifts you had given us, to expand and multiply them. Alas, we abandoned our mission. Instead, we hoarded selfishly, nor did wisdom come to us when repeatedly we lost everything we had. For the young bird in flight for the first time gloried in its newfound strength. It began to think how foolish I would be to share my strength with anyone. What else is wisdom if not to keep what is mine for myself? And so we, like that bird, entered upon the second stage of the soul's long journey away from its home in God, the stage which is called the revolt. I've drunk the cup of laughter No man could tell The pleasures I have known The stars in the endless sky If one could count Would come to billions Yet as vast as are their numbers So many years I wandered far from you Yet as vast as are their numbers So many years I wandered far from you That bird's brief day was like eons of our time. When afternoon came, it entered a storm cloud and soon found itself struggling for its life. Wind and rain lashed at its wings. The more it fought back, the weaker it became. Give yourself into my hands, cried the wind. To your strength, I can then add my own. At last, the little bird heeded this counsel. Then, suddenly, it found itself soaring joyously, high above the clouds. Hours passed, and night fell. The little bird grew afraid. How, it cried, can I fly in this darkness? And the night whispered, Fear not, for lo, peace awaits you in the unknown. Surrender to me, and your strength will be renewed. And after a time, the tiny rebels surrendered and found the night's counsel true. Through many lives I've drunk the cup of sorrow 
no man could tell the bitter tears i've shed the drops in the endless sea if one could count would come to billions yet as vast as are their numbers so many years i wandered far from you yet as vast as are their numbers so many years i wandered far from you and rain and sky and grassy fields all sang behold your very strength to fly has never been your own look to the source of all power if you would co- conquer fear and weakness and the bird asked where can i find that source and they answered seek it in the farthest depths of being in your own self thus gradually the bird entered that third stage of the journey which is called the quest we now like that little bird have come to realize that buffeting winds are life's way of giving us strength and courage that even fear like shadows on a statue gives light and substance to hope through countless lives i've sought your cup of sweetness found other cups but thirsted ever more the streams in the hills of time all found their way into a desert every noon of bright fulfillment ere many hours did sing to evening gloom every noon of bright fulfillment ere many hours did sing to evening gloom from the depths of unknowing lord we cry out to thee is there no lasting purpose to our lives behold all that we thought was light was but darkness who are we in reality for what end were we made I long for you in summer and in winter only for you my heart thirsts day and night I've known that the sweetest songs ears ever heard were but your echo Lord at last fill me completely for never more I'd wander far from you Lord at last fill me completely for never more I'd wander far from you. Ever and again through your awakened sons the answer comes. The forming of stars and moons and planets of galaxies revolving on the tides of space of drifting continents upheaving mountains 
snowy wastes and dark, silent ocean deeps had but this for its design, the birth of life. And with life's birth, the dawn of self-awareness, passage through dim corridors of waking consciousness to emerge at last into infinite light, into perfect joy. I was caught up in ecstasy T'was a day sanctified by God There he showed me the truths of heaven Truths which all seeking him should know How the soul made to live in freedom Can reclaim its eternal light how the night born of our delusion can be fired blazing with his Gaze upon this light as a symbol of God's love. A prayer of love went up from earth and you responded. A ray of your light flashed out from the heart of infinity, burst downward through night skies of consciousness, and was born on earth for the redemption of mankind in human form. Many times has that light descended, drawn to earth by the call of aspiring love. Your chosen people have always been those of every race and nation who with deep love chose thee. Please pray with me. O oh Lord, oh Lord, with all my heart, with all my, heart. With all my mind, with all my soul, and with all my strength, I choose thy love. I choose only thee. The infinite Christ consciousness, the only begotten, 
has come down anew to earth for the salvation of mankind. When we need you, Lord, our beloved, you descend our human griefs, your love alone can mend. By proud indifference unaffected, though eternally rejected, you remain our friend. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. i 
O Father, may I behold thee above, beneath, behind, around, wherever I turn my gaze. Train the children of my senses never to stray from thee, who dwellest at the heart of everything. Turn my eyes inward to thy changeless beauty. Attune my ears to silence that I may hear thy subtlest music. Breathe on me the heavenly scent of thy sacred presence. Orient-wise, I will worship thee, placing the candles of my five senses on the altar of my love. Thus, I will contact thee in the first pale shafts of dawn, absorb thee in the bright light of noon, expand in thee with the hidden glow of twilight, and merge in thee in the silver moonlight. Always will I keep a light on my inner altar, the mystic taper of my love for thee. When in Bethlehem Jesus was born, the angels did herald the news to shepherds that slept upon a wintry field. They sang, Awake in the Lord. In the same country, shepherds, abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known to us. And they came with haste, and found Mary, and Joseph, and the babe lying in a manger. O come, O ye faithful, Joyful and triumphant, O come ye, O come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, born the King of angels. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us adore him. Sing, all ye 
citizens of I was made for thee alone. I was made for dropping flowers of devotion gently at thy feet on the altar of the morning. My hands were made to serve thee willingly, to remain folded in adoration, waiting for thy coming. And when thou didst come, to bathe thy feet with my tears, my voice was made to sing thy glory. My feet were made to seek thy temples everywhere. My eyes were made a chalice to hold thy burning love and the wisdom falling from thy nature's hands. My ears were made to catch the music of thy footsteps echoing through the halls of space and to hear thy divine melodies flowing through all heart tracks of devotion. My lips were made to breathe forth thy praises and thine intoxicating inspirations. My love was made to throw the incandescent searchlight flames to find thee hidden among the forest of my desires. My heart was made to respond to thy call alone. My soul was made to be the channel through which thy love might flow uninterruptedly to all thirsty souls. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there were wise men from the east to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who was born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. And there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, 
they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Then three wise men came from afar, guided by the heavenly star. Rise the light of God and descend, that receiving him all might be saved. Thus the promise of God was maintained. Thus our true souls were called to the light. That their darkness be lifted, that their hearts be made whole. When Mary's babe smiled, he conveyed truth and Let their darkness be lifted, let their hearts be made whole. When Mary's babe smiled, he conveyed truth and grace. Then three wise men came from afar, guided by a men came from afar, guided by a heavenly star. Christ the light of God has descended, Christ the light of God had come, that receiving him that receiving him all might be saved, all might be saved. Three wise men came, guided by a star, to do honor and welcome the Christ born on earth. Three men came, guided by a star, to do honor and welcome the Christ born on earth. Joyfully lifting up our hearts in song, we pray that we who earnestly seek communion with your light Receive it in our lives abundantly. I think it was a mistake. Lord, we offer up the little light that is in us into thy blazing light of infinity. Grant us the grace to know thee and make us ever increasingly pure channels of thy love to all.
joyfully lifting up our hearts in song, we pray that we who earnestly seek communion with your light receive it in our lives abundantly. feel so inclined to come to the altar now and receive the touch of light from the masters as you approach offer a prayer of gratitude to the infinite Christ in whose love our line of masters have descended that we might all come to God pray too for the grace to share with all as you have received For you are a part of all that is. May the light of Christ, the infinite consciousness, shine upon you. Long ago Oh. Mm-hmm. 
wonderful it was that Christmas day. How from far and near they came to pray. How from far they glimpsed his majesty, whom men called the sun. so many hearts to love us with this holy son of Mary. Could it be
Child's asleep, the silence is so deep that round about with hope in their eyes, the animals are wait, their breathing they abate, they know their time has come to arise. For Jesus came on earth to offer second birth to all who would the blessing receive. The inner peace he brings can lift the on soul wings to soar in light on heaven perceive. Our pleasures and pains, our losses, our gains, have kept us long bound. The ropes of yearning hemmed us round. We dreamed of imposing on desert sand, flower gardens of beauty, verdant fields of delight. 
imagination missed at our sight the freedom we would know Christ offered long ago and even from his slumber flows peace all creatures here on earth alive to their own worth can welcome love and win their release the Christ child's asleep the silence is so deep that round about with hope in their eyes the animals await their breathing they abate they know their time has come to O Spirit, beloved Father, Oversoul of the universe, Spirit of spirits, friend of friends, Teach me the mystery of my existence. Teach me to worship thee in breathlessness and deathlessness. In the fire of devotion, burn away my ignorance. In the stillness of my soul, come, spirit, come. Possess me and teach me to feel thy immortal presence in and all around me. Come, spirit, come. Come. Spirit, come. O oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining Till he appeared and the soul felt its worth A thrill of hope the weary world rejoices for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Fall on your knees, O oh, hear the angel voices, O oh, no. Divine, O oh, night, when Christ was born, O oh, night, divine, O oh, night, O oh, night, divine. Christ child's asleep, the silence is so deep that round about with hope in their eyes the animals await, their breathing they abate, they know their time has come to arrive. For Jesus came on earth to offer second birth to 
blessing receive The inner peace he brings Can lift us on soul wings To soar in light and heaven perceive Our pleasures and pains Our losses, our gains have kept us long bound The ropes of yearning hemmed us round We dreamed of imposing on desert sand Flower gardens of beauty Fared in fails of delight Imagination misted our sight the freedom we would know Christ offered long ago And even from his slumber flows peace All creatures here on earth Alive to their own worth Can welcome love and win their Christ child's asleep The silence is so deep That round about with hope in their eyes The animals await Their breathing they abate They know their time has come to Heavenly Father, Divine Mother, Friend, Beloved God, Jesus Christ, Babaji Krishna, Lahiri Mahashaya, Swami Sri Yukteswar, Our Beloved Guru Deva, Paramahansa Yogananda, saints of all religions, we humbly bow before you all. Beloved Christ, may thy love shine forever on the sanctuary of our devotion, and may we be able to awaken thy love in all hearts. Om. Peace. Amen.